Hello, welcome to Jesus for All Two, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible. For January 12th, 2022, here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with a goal of pleasing the Heavenly Father. For Hebrews 11, 6 notes, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have learned from Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so we are hearing the word of God. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. And Romans 10, 8, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of the message, the basis of faith, which we preach. Hallelujah. And Romans 1, 17, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed in a way that awakens more faith. As it is written and forever remains written, the just and upright shall live by faith. Amen. And so, and John 6, 35, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the words of life that we shall hear today are Psalm 18, continuing with verse 28 through verse 50, Proverbs 12. The New Testament reading will be continue with the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 1 through verse 20, 28. And the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Genesis, chapter 6 to chapter 7, chapter 7 verse 24. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved, unless otherwise noted. And today we did hear a reading of scripture in the introduction from the Amplified Version of the Bible. I'd like to thank every listener to Jesus for all too. I pray that your faith is increasing, that you are discovering the promises of God, and how to walk and live in them in Jesus' name. And if the readings have been a blessing to you, I pray you would share them with another, and in Jesus' name, if you are so inclined that you would subscribe. And now, continuing, Psalm 18, verse 28, and it reads, For you will light my lamp, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run through a troop, by my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. 35. You have seen, you have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back till they were destroyed. 38. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. 39. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. 41. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. 43. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The foreigners submit 
to me. 45. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. 46. The Lord lives, blessed be my rock, that the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdues the people under me. 48. He delivers me from my enemies. He also you also lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Forty nine. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. Verse 50 and last. Great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed to David and his descendants forevermore. Amen. And this word in the name of Jesus Christ is already blessed, as is I pray in the name of Jesus Christ is every here. Certainly we know that we are the descendants of David by virtue of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who caused us to be, by believing in him, the children of God, based on John 1 and 12, which reads, John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. But even prior to that, the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 24, from this man's seed, that's talking about David. Well, I'm going to start Acts 13, 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. 23. From this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a savior, Jesus. And so... When David talks about Psalm 18, verse 50, to David and his descendants forevermore, we are the descendants by virtue of Jesus Christ. Jesus is a descendant of David, and we are the descendants of Jesus. Hallelujah. And 50, verse 50, great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants. Hallelujah. We are those descendants who God shows mercy to. Hallelujah and amen. And now, Proverb 12, and it reads, Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. 7. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. A man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Better is the one who is slighted but has a servant than he who honors himself but lacks bread. A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He who tills his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who follows frivolity is devoid of understanding. 12. The wicked covet the catch of evil men, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. The wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will come through trouble. 14. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands will be rendered to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. 17. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. 
Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked will be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. 24. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. 25. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. The righteous shall choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. 27. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is man's precious possession. Verse 28 and last. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. Amen. And this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ is every hearer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the word. The word of wisdom. A lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And now the New Testament reading, continuing today with the book of Hebrews. The New Testament reading, continuing in the book of Hebrews, today beginning with chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. And it reads, For this Melchizedek, King of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated King of Righteousness, and then also King of Salem, meaning King of Peace. Verse 3. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither be beginning of days nor end of, d end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. For now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. 6. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. 7. Now beyond all the contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. 11. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not be called according to the order of Aaron? 12. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. 13. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. 15. And it is yet far more evident, if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest, who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. Verse 17, for he testifies, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. 18, for on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing of a better hope through which we draw near to God. 20. And inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with an oath by him who said to him, 
The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. 22. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. 24. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save to the utmost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. 26. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Verse 28 and last. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weaknesses, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the Son who has been perfected forever. Perfected forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this word which is already blessed. And we thank you that we are blessed by hearing it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that by the spirit of the Holy Ghost who lives within us, the spirit of truth, our helper, our counselor, and our comforter, that he will reveal this word to us, open our understanding of this word, that we may receive the blessings inherent in this word, in the mighty name. Receive them and understand the blessings that are in this word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And now, continuing with the Old Testament reading, today, Genesis 6. The book of Genesis, chapter 6. Hallelujah. The book of Genesis, continuing today with chapter 6. And it reads, Now, it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. 7. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Verse 13. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. 14. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. 17. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. 
18. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh you shall bring two of every sort into the ark, to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. 20. Of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. 21. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. 22. Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. Chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female, also seven each of birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven days I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters were on the earth. Seven. So Noah with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean animals, of animals that are unclean, of birds, and of everything that creeps on the earth. Verse 9. Two by two they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month, I'm, let me take that again, the 17th day of the month, on the day all the fountains, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were open, 12, and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark. 14. They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after its kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh, in which is the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. 17. Now the flood was on the earth forty days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose higher, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark... moved about on the surface of the waters. 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. 20. The waters prevailed fifteen cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died and moved on, that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man. 22. All in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on the dry land died. 23. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. 24. And last for today. And the waters prevailed on the earth one hundred and 50 days. Amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, his every hearer. Amen, amen, and amen. And Father, we thank you for the word, and we thank you for revealing it to us and giving us understanding by the Spirit of truth who lives within us. We thank you, Father, that according to John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And verse 8, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. 
And Psalm 107.20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Father, thank you for this word, for sending your word, your holy son, Jesus, to deliver us, to heal us and deliver us from every destruction in our lives. We believe it by faith and we thank you that we are healed and that we have been delivered from every destruction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name.